This is a short video about uh, using Autograph to have a look at the chain rule and how it applies to the function y equals sine 2x. Uh, this page here is, is how it all finishes up and it's a bit complicated to look at all in one go. This is y equals sine 2x, this is y equals sine x, this is a point on y equals sine 2x at the point x equals a, and this is the point at x equals 2a. The transformation from one to the other is, of course, a um, transformation of the x scale by a factor of 2. And it looks as though the tangent at this point and the tangent at this point produce gradients which are in the ratio of 2 to 1 as well. We can just check that for a second. If we have a look at this gradient here, the tangent is uh, minus root 2, and the gradient here should be a half of that, which is indeed uh, minus 1 over root 2. We can also have a look at the actual gradient function of y equals sine 2x, which is 2 cosine of 2x. So let's um, have a look at this by starting from scratch, and we'll put in y equals sine, to it, uh, sine x, rather, first of all. And we'll just use the red tick to make sure the scales are OK. I've also need equal aspect, which I think is quite useful. Wasn't far off it anyway. So at the very first instance, I'm just going to right click, put in y equals sine 2x, and see how that compares. Now, obviously, sine 2x uh, is a transformation of the x scale. If we just pause it there, uh, by the time x gets to pi by 2, uh, sine 2x has reached pi. In other words, it's half finished, so it's going to have half a cycle here and the other half cycle here. So that's what that looks like. Now, I want this to be the focus of our attention, so I'm just going to make this a little fatter. Four and a half, that's good. Let's put a point here and let's establish what the first derivative is anyway. Right click, tangent, and just move it around until we get some points we recognize. Now here's the zero and the slope here, if we double click on this, is uh, a slope of two. So we definitely have a slope of two up here. As this moves along, so it goes down to zero here and here it is at minus 2 and so on. So you get the idea that it's going to be double the, fre uh, fre uh, double the frequency of sine x and it's going to have double the amplitude. So let's have a look at that. If we slowly plot the first derivative, it's pausing at all the key moments and it's paused straight away, so we'll just take that going. So this does quite nicely confirm uh, by going through the little blobs that we put on that the uh, first derivative is indeed double the amplitude but the same frequency as y equals sine 2x. Edit, select all scribbles and delete, tidy that up. Looks like we've got something else selected. So deselect that. Ah, the, the point there. So I'm going to leave that for now and edit, select all scribbles and delete. Now what I'm going to do next uh, is put a point here on the curve, not at x equals that, but at uh, x equals a. Now, a will be 1, which is in radian speak is about there, isn't it? So that's about that. It's good. Now, if you think that the uh, sine 2x is a transformation of sine x by um, squashing up the x scale, then if we put a point here at x equals 2a, enter a point on the curve at x equals 2a, that should produce a point with the same value of y over there, which indeed it does. I'll just confirm that by right-click, put a horizontal line through there, and let's put a vertical line through, because I should want that in a moment. If I select these two, I can make them nice and dotted. So right-click, Edit Draw Options, and Dotted Line. Let's make them the same colour while we're at it. So what does this represent? This represents the same y value at the two different functions. And uh, what's interesting about this is that if we take um, a point here and now draw a tangent, what's the slope here? The slope here is negative 0.83, so this should be a half of that, which is 416. That's fantastic. So that's quite a nice way of showing that the um, transformation is between x and 2x 
and the gradient of a tangent at any particular point, the same value of y, has also been doubled. So, let's, so this is basically twice as active as the sine x. So the gradient of the tangent at this point is, let's just remind ourselves, negative 0.83, and if I take this point down to here, that will indeed correspond to that point there. So this is representing the value on the first derivative function. This is representing the same value of y at the two functions. We could uh, make this a bit more interesting using the constant controller. Let's make a somewhere nice, like, let's do pi by 2. But make the step pi by 16. OK, so that's here. So um, that has a, a gradient, let's have a look, should be minus 2. It is indeed minus 2. And this should have a gradient of minus 1. And that is minus 1. So it's quite nice to move this around and see that the two do indeed have this relationship that goes right through the function. So I think this is quite a nice way of illustrating the chain rule. Um, and that the doubling process could clearly be investigated again if we assign 3x and sine 4x and so on, and noticing that the amplitude goes to 3 and 4. So that's the link, I think, between the chain rule, y equals sine 2x, and y equals sine x. Yeah.